Here is Dave Dugdale, learningvideo.com. So I think 2015 will go down as a year where color grading apps and NLEs came together and just made our life a whole bunch easier. On one hand, we've got Premiere Pro CC 2015, which hasn't been released yet, probably in a month or so, I think it'll come out, is got basically speed grade integrated into Premiere Pro. So you got the NLE and color all in one. No round tripping, everything's good. Then on the other hand, we've got DaVinci Resolve 12, which will come out in about a month. And it's got basically a very powerful color grading app, and but now it's pretty much has a full-blown NLE built into it. So when I was at NEB in April, I was somewhat foolish and spent way too much time trying to get some answers to questions that I had about speed grade when I really should have been spending most of my time getting to know DaVinci Resolve 12 made by Blackmagic because I don't know if you've seen some of the videos on 12, but it's pretty amazing what this thing can do. Even in multicam editing, it's pretty darn powerful. All right, before we go any further, I just wanna mention that I'm a Windows user, therefore any Final Cut Pro products or whatever can be pretty much taken off the table. And then in terms of two others I wanna mention are Avid and Edius. Those have a smaller user base. If you look back at that um, survey I did over a year ago, I uh, found out there was not many people using that, at least that follow me anyway. And therefore, I'm going to guess that there's not going to be many tutorials to learn from on YouTube or training products out there for those products. There might be. I have no idea. Um, and then in terms of Sony Vegas, I'm really glad I left five years ago to go to Premiere Pro because Premiere Pro at that time, about five years ago, came up with the Mercury playback engine. And that was just amazing. It was like, ah, oh, type of moment. Um, and I really don't want to go back to Sony uh, Vegas at this point. All right, getting back to Premiere Pro versus Resolve 12. When I was at the SpeedGrade booth at NEB, I went up to them, I said, where's all the changes? What's going on? And they were like, well, basically we've taken pretty much all the scopes and the core components and put it into Premiere Pro. And I have no problem with that. I think that is a fantastic idea where you don't have to round trip, no dynamic linking. It's all right there and it's a separate tab. Wonderful idea. So I was like asking, are you gonna do anything with it? Are you gonna kill it off? And they really wouldn't answer my question. In fact, I just called Adobe and I asked that same question and the guy on the phone, I don't know if he knew much, but he was like, well, I can't give you any information on that because we don't know. I'm like, how do you not know? You're the company. And like, you're showing all these other new things that are coming out for Premiere Pro. Why don't you tell us what's going on with SpeedGrade? So unfortunately, I don't know if SpeedGrade is gonna be killed off or not. All right, so the new Premiere Pro SpeedGrade combo, I think will be a very powerful tool and be able to handle just about any project you throw at it. Now, Resolve 12, having a pretty decent NLE, um, has very advanced color features in it. I'll give me an example, hue versus hue. We've had that in Resolve for quite a while. We've never had that in SpeedGrade. And when you're dealing with Sony A7S S-Log2 footage, I find myself going to that control more and more. So I think Resolve will always have more powerful features. For instance, also you can pull a qualifier in Resolve, I think, so much faster than I can in SpeedGrade. So all in all, I'd say Resolve for me on the, on the color side of things, I've always been able to work faster and more creatively. Now, Premiere Pro has always had a few issues that have always frustrated me. One of them being the audio sync. So if you have two cameras, you line them up on the timeline and you say sync by audio, I'd say 25% of the time it does a pretty good job, but 75% of the time it just flies one clip off the screen. You don't know where it went. It's like, what just happened? Perhaps Resolve will have more of a pluralized kind of feel to it when you try to sync audio in a multicam edit. I hope Resolve works really well there. So if I make this change, I could downgrade my CC membership from $50 a month to like $10 a month and I get Photoshop and Lightroom. And in terms of After Effects, I haven't been using it that much, so maybe I could try using the new Fusion 7 from Blackmagic. All right, here's my thought. Premiere Pro is strong in editing, while Resolve is very strong in color. Now, it might be a while till Premiere Pro color gets as good as Resolve is in color right now. So my bet is that the NLE, the editor that's built in Resolve, will improve faster than the color in Premiere Pro. Now, if I do move over to Resolve 12 
it's probably not going to be all roses. I mean, one of the things I'm, I'm sure I'm going to miss is the temperature sliders that are in speed grade. Those have just been great. I wish we had temperature sliders like that in Resolve. So when it comes down to it, is the NLE more important than color or the other way around? I would say with shooting with the Sony a7S with S-Log, that color is more important than the NLE. I mean, when it comes down to it, the Sony a7S does not have the nice colors that you get off of like the Canon 5D Mark III, for instance. So that's pretty much it. Um, hey, I, I've got a few items on sale on eBay. Today is June 12th and they end on 13th, 14th. I'm pretty sure it's Sunday the 14th. So if you're watching this in the future, then they're not for sale anymore. But if you're interested, I got some Canon lenses, ND filters, and I'll put all the links for that below. All right, talk to you guys later. Bye.